As always, we get started with our squares for the week. Now, our squares are players that have legitimate concerns around them. Managers are considering leaving them out of their lineups. But we're here to tell you, stay square, stay chalk, put them in your lineups. Tim, who is your square play for week 14? I want to go with Jerome Ford this week against Jacksonville. I think there's a, a multitude of reasons why we should uh, keep him in our lineups. He's RB25 in consensus. So he's just outside top 24, and I think he makes top 24 this week. There's a few reasons for that. Well, if we even look at last week, he was uh, the first scorer. He was involved in the passing game early. And in since week six, he's only been outside the top 24 one time. So he is really Mr. Mr. Top 24 um, in the running back position currently. Uh, also, I, I do really like the fact that he's getting pretty consistent targets. I think that with Joe Flacco, as we saw with his stint with the Jets, his targets, like he's very quick to, to get rid of the football. He also, he also showed a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of strength with that arm this week, but he's very quick first read because he doesn't want to get hit. And a lot of those will turn into dump offs. And we've already seen that he was Ford was already getting those targets. And he got three last week, caught all three, 33 yards and a touchdown. So he's producing well just in just in the passing game alone. And I don't think Cream Hunt's really someone that's going to challenge him because Cream Hunt, even though Jerome Ford's snap share went down compared to what he was getting before, Cream Hunt's even lower than that. So I still think this that this is. Ford's backfield. I think that this is a good matchup for them to really focus on the run, play good defense, force Beathard to really try to win the game, get in good field position, maybe force a couple turnovers and see what they can do in the red zone. So I think that this is a good opportunity for him to score a touchdown. He's done that in five games. He scored at least one touchdown in five games this year. So if we look at the the times in which he actually was a focal point of the offense, you know, it's almost 50% of the game season, which is pretty good. So I think that this is going to be a pretty interesting matchup for Ford, and I think that he's going to take a pretty bulk uh, of the carries, and I think they're going to be in the red zone probably three or four times, and he'll get the opportunity to score at least one. Yeah, all Flacco has to do in that game is manage it. Uh, Cleveland should be should be in the lead for that entire game. Jacksonville losing Trevor Lawrence was an absolute blow. Um, and it is surprising to see that Hunt has been as uninvolved as he has been in the passing game, right? With, with Joe Flacco coming in, I was thinking maybe maybe there was a little bit of a tides turning towards Kareem Hunt away from Jerome Ford. But as you mentioned, not that three targets is significant, but Kareem Hunt got one target, right? So I would like to see Ford's carries go up a little bit. Um, but the, the volume he's been getting in the air the last four or five weeks has been really encouraging. And Jacksonville, a team who, well, now is without their starting quarterback against a very legit defense, uh, is bottom 10 against the run over the last month. So it's a team that is regressing in that sense. And the team is significantly worse than they were even a week ago. So this really should be a spot for Jerome Ford to at worst, continue what he's doing at best, maybe get a little bit more opportunity. And as you mentioned, you look down his lines, he's gotten you double digits every week. Now he's not getting you much more than that, <laughs> but he's like the ultimate, you just set and kind of forget RB two. It's just what he's been this year has been a perfect plug for those managers who have really needed that that stopgap back between all the injuries we get in the league. There's a lot to be said about a guy who's finishing RB 18, 19, 20 every single week. And I think Jerome Ford does that again for you this week. At least I sure hope so in the leagues that I have him. Uh, he's 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 filling in for Jonathan Taylor in a couple places right now. So uh, I'm riding with you on this one. I am going to tell people to start Brandon Cooks, who is the ECR wide receiver 26. Now I'm here to tell you top 30. The reason I'm kind of backing that up a little bit. I just want to mention that not everybody tracks the, the fantasy pros ECR, right? A lot of people. And I think this is shown very much with a player like tank Dell in past weeks where manners are asking us their start sit questions and they're having tank down against players. We have in our rankings that almost wide receiver three or wide receiver four marks. And then in my rankings, it got tanked out like wide receiver six ECR has tanked out like wide receiver 10. And it just goes to show not everyone's looking at that, right? They're looking at kind of the projections within their app, what they've been used to all season, where they still, where they perceive players based on what they drafted, what they did earlier in the season. And I think Brandon Cooks is a player that's going to fall into that this week where people are going to go, well, Brandon Cooks, he's had a couple good weeks, but he's been primarily boom bust. I don't know when to start him. The projections in my app don't have him as high as other players. You know, maybe some of our scares that are coming up are good examples for that. And they go against Brandon Cooks in a matchup where I really feel that they they shouldn't. So despite him being ECR wide receiver 26, I'm here to tell you that he should be in your wide receiver three leagues. 
um, he can be that wide receiver three, or he can be that flex spot for you guys in your two wide receiver leagues. Uh, one area, Brandon Cooks obviously excels downfield. He connects on deep balls. He scores touchdowns. Luckily for the Cooks managers, the Eagles, they force opponents to throw the ball a lot, and then they're unable to cover it. Uh, wide receivers have scored 21 touchdowns versus the Eagles this year. That's the most in the league. Uh, and things really haven't improved for the Eagles down the stretch because they've allowed the most touchdowns over the last month, that being seven. There's some perceived risk here with Cooks because he has only had over four targets just three times. And the last time he put up a dud was against the Eagles. He's very reliant on touchdowns. But I'm here to tell you to stick the course. All Cooks needs to hit this mark, this top 30 play, is one big play, which is something that is common against the Eagles. It's something that I very much see happening here, especially with how well the Dallas offense has been playing and how he has been incorporated more of late, right? You only get in those four targets, but he is getting hit downfield, which is value. Not all targets are created equal, and Brandon Cooks is getting high-value targets at the moment. Yeah, this is a very, it's a very different Dallas team in terms of their offensive production, even going into the season. Cooks, the last uh, seven weeks, five or seven weeks, he's been top 36 with a couple big weeks in there. So I think he's more he's more reliable than people are giving him credit for. But I understand that it's very scary when he's not getting you know more than four targets because that's just not the mark you want to be seeing. But what we're seeing with Dallas is that I think we're seeing a lot more of what we were expecting Dak to be maybe a year, year and a half ago before the injury and even last season. There seems to be a lot more confidence in the passing game, especially deep. They're, they've been very, very dangerous deep, even with CD as well. And I think a lot of it has to do with just uh, the level of comfort that Dak is having reading the defense as well as what the offense is calling for. Because a lot of my concerns with Dak coming into the season was that he didn't look comfortable. He didn't look like he could get through his reads. And I think a lot of that had to do with how he was reading the deep safety or how what the principles were that they were operating under. Because there was a lot of confusion a lot of times with, with CD. And that's why Dak turned the ball over a lot downfield was because they weren't on the same page. And it seems to be they are completely on the same page this year. We're seeing an older version of Dak. He's even running more. So I think he's getting more confident reading coverages, finding out how to really attack underneath, if, even if that is with his legs. I'm not going to ever say that the rushing that we got early from Dak is going to come back. But I think the way that he is being a threat on every play gives the opportunity for cooks to be a threat on every play. And I think that's very valuable, especially for a guy that probably didn't cost you much. You can easily slide in your wide receiver three, your flex position and just reap the benefits of, of the deep balls. Yeah. Well, you know, Dak, we had mentioned earlier in the season, he had regressed to like three yards per carry or less. And he's back up over four. He looks when you do the eye test, he looks more mobile. He looks more comfortable. And I think maybe all that's just coming together. I didn't think it would come once Kellen Moore left that this offense would pick up him the way it did. I don't think anyone predicted that to happen, but I think you're absolutely right. He looks more comfortable. He's connecting on the deep ball a little bit more. I think Brandon Cooks has just opened up that part of the game for him as well. The little bit of mobility. It's crazy once you open up your game like that, how more comfortable you get. So maybe maybe the injury, he is just settling in a bit more. I mean, he was very unfortunate with injuries in the past few seasons. Uh, I had a conversation with someone at work who was trying to tell me how he's injury prone. And I was I had had to jump on a little soapbox there for Dak Prescott because I really feel he's just got unfortunate in those injuries. I mean, the way he broke his leg was just kind of a freak thing, but it is good to see him turn things around. Um, and with Brandon cooks, right. You, as you mentioned, he, he's finished uh, top in five of the seven games, top 24. Um, but that's been led by touchdowns. But if there's one team you're going to bank on touchdowns against, it's the worst one in the league. So I, I think, I think it leans into the call um, and I feel pretty good squeezing him into lineups this week.